Well, equal pay was at the centre of another debate today. This time it referred to civil servants in the PSNI and the Northern Ireland office who've been unable to access an equal pay settlement. The motion put forward by the DUP called on the Justice Minister to recognise and address the perceived unfairness. As members will be aware, in 2009 there were around 4,500 equal pay claims lodged with the Industrial Tribunal on behalf of the Northern Ireland Civil Service. Uh, staff who worked at Administrative Assistant, Administrative Officer and Executive Officer 2 grades, who believed that they were treated differently than male comparators working at the same grades within their relevant departments. On the 1st of February 2009, an agreement was reached by the Department of Finance and Personnel and NIPSA on how these claims were to be resolved. Unfortunately, Mr Deputy Speaker, Civil servants who worked for the PSNI or the Northern Ireland Office were excluded from this settlement. Members will also be aware of the decision made by Judge Babington on the 7th of March to dismiss the equal pay, pay claims of these civil servants. You, uh, as I, were a member of the Northern Ireland Policing Board. and During that period, uh, you will remember that the uh, police service uh, with the assistance of the Justice Minister, got some £86 million pounds additional a number of years back. Inside that figure was a £21 or £26 million pounds figure to actually settle this pay claim. That money was supposed to have been ring-fenced. Would it be good if the Minister could answer exactly where that money is and is it still available to pay these people who are justifiably making this claim. The DUP MLA Jimmy Spratt is with me now in the studio. Mr Spratt, we heard there from David Ford, the Justice Minister, there's no legal requirement, therefore there's no money. Were you expecting a different response? Well, I was, because during my tenure in the Northern Ireland Policing Board, uh, the Minister and indeed other colleagues on the Executive fought a case for an additional £86 million, I think was the figure, uh, and part of that uh, package uh, apart from the security element uh, required, was a £26 million package uh, which the uh, police had asked for to settle this particular claim. We heard the Finance Minister saying today that he would uh, write to the Finance Minister to see if he can arrange a business case based on fairness. He said that's not likely, but I wonder why you targeted this at the Justice Minister rather than the Finance Minister, Sammy Wilson. Well, I think this is something that collectively ministers need to sort out. This is a matter of fairness and equality in terms of mostly female staff uh, from the 2009 claim uh, which was settled. I think in terms of the court case, uh, the court case is one thing. Uh, the judge probably wasn't in receipt of all of the evidence at the time in relation to the case uh, and uh, in, in, in terms of actually settling this uh, a wrong that has been uh, perpetrated on the folks concerned. Uh, it needs to be sorted out, and I think it can be sorted out, and it was quite obvious that Treasury were prepared to give that additional money to help to sort it out uh, a way back. Now, the cr critical issue, of course, is that the motion was successful today, but the civil servants involved with the PSNI and the NIO aren't necessarily any closer to getting their money. Well, I would hope that as a result of today, the issue has been raised, it has been brought forward. I hope there will be discussions. Uh, from the Justice Minister with uh, the DFP Minister, my colleague Sammy Wilson, mm. and that collectively uh, something can be done to sort this out because uh, I think the, the Chief Con and I think there's a liability also on the Chief Constable and the Northern Ireland Policing Board as well on this issue. Okay, it's a lot quieter up here today than it was yesterday with that uh, yes, very long debate about the, uh, the Special Advisors Bill. Good day for Jim Allister yesterday, do you concede that? I think it was a good day, I think it was a good day for common sense, it was a good day uh, in terms of the legislation uh, which only affected very few people, but in terms of what we're talking about today, it affects uh, considerable number more people who are a lot lower paid than the people we were talking about yesterday. Okay, can't let you go without asking you about the name of this new political party, NI21, the name we understand, Basil McRae and John McAllister's party. As a fellow unionist, do you wish them well for their big launch on Thursday? Well, I'm sure everybody wishes them well. Uh, I don't know how successful it'll be. Uh, I think the the uh, thing that I like most so far was that somebody tweeted that it was uh, sounded like a, a particular make of a car. Uh, so uh, let's see what happens in coming days. You're telling me you're not quaking in your boots? 
Absolutely not, and I don't think anybody within my party will be quaking in their boots as a result of uh, what uh, the uh, John and Basil are launching uh, later this week. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get more details on that in due course. Uh, Jimmy Spratt for now, thank you thank very you. much indeed for uh, joining us.